Hi, uh, well, welcome to TV African News and thank you for always joining us. This is Africa Today. My name is Najima Luima, but first are the headlines. DPP launches prosecutor plea bargain guidelines. Critics warn of possible unrest if Jamie's party joins government. And in sports, Uganda edge Burkina Faso in opening duel of the championship. I want welcome once again now the news in detail. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions with support from UN Women has launched prosecutor plea bargain guidelines. The main objective of the guidelines is to streamline the processes to be followed by prosecutors in conducting plea bargain and to enhance the efficiency of the criminal justice system for orderly, predictable, uniform, consistent and timely resolution of criminal matters. We have more. While at the launch, the DPP Jane Francis Abodo said plea bargain guidelines are intended to train and build the capacity of all stakeholders in the criminal justice system and in particular prosecutors, judicial officers, defense lawyers, police and prisons officers on the objectives and procedures of plea bargaining which are human rights based victim, stroke survivor centered and gender sensitive. On behalf of the judiciary, the Honorable, the Principal Judge, Dr. Flavian Zaija, embraced the guidelines as a remedy for injustices that are being caused during the process, particularly unfair sentences. Dr. Benson Okech, the chief guest who represented the UN Women Country representative at the launch said the guidelines are intended to elevate the survivors voices by allowing them to participate in the plea bargain process the plea bargain guidelines contain principles of plea bargaining types of plea bargaining the law applicable to the process an outline of the plea bargaining process contents of the plea bargain agreement and its execution monitoring and evaluation of the plea bargain procedure as well as the roles of the parties involved in plea bargaining, their rights and support systems. The DPP expressed her gratitude to UN Women, EU, UN Spotlight Initiative and the Embassy of Sweden for the financial support towards the development of the guidelines. For TV Africa, Najma Lima reporting. The High Court has agreed with the Electoral Commission and dismissed the petition in which Suleiman Chidandala was challenging Mohammed Segirinya's win for Kawempe North Member of Parliament seat. The petition has been dismissed on grounds of lack of service to the respondent Segirinya by the time he was in prison. We have more. According to Justice Henrietta Wolayo's ruling, Suleiman Kidandala didn't effectively serve the respondent where he focused on the respondent rather than focusing on the officer in charge of Kitalia who could have been a witness to the service. Eric Sabit, the Electoral Commission lawyer, said that this development now confirms the Segrinha's win and they are delighted that the court answered their prayer of dismissal. However, Paul Kenneth Kakande, the lawyer to the petitioner, said that he has been given instructions to appeal. For, for, for the Electoral Commission, not Segrinha. No, no, I'm not, I'm not for Segrinha. I was representing the Commission on a point of law. You get it? Did I say I was the representative of the Secretary General to record? <laughs> no. I'm a lawyer for the Electoral Commission. I'm still a lawyer for the Electoral Commission. Okay? Thank you. Well, he's entitled to the opinion. He's entitled to the opinion. Uh, I've been in court, I put an application, it has been decided. So, I don't know whether my conduct in court or outside, I don't know what he means. So, I think he'll give you better particulars on that. No one can. Well, it's a task to the government in Baden for a resort. So, what? Baden for a resort. Baden for a resort. Baden for a resort. Baden for a resort. Commission. 
The fundamental question is, did the respondent know or does the respondent know that it is a case against me? Because election petitions take a course of investigation. It is an inquiry. It is not a normal case. It is an inquiry. So the inquiry should be done. Does the first respondent know that it is a case against me? Do you want us to believe that the first respondent does not know anything about this case? The Supreme Court said effective service is when the other party knows that there is a case against me. Once that party knows that there is a case against me, it is effective service. And that's what we do. So if you want me to believe that the first respondent is somewhere in Bahamas and does not know that there is a case against me, I'm not part of Chidandala, who came second with 7,512 votes, dragged Segrinya, who won the seat, with 41,197 votes to court for lack of the required academic qualifications. But the Electoral Commission asked court to dismiss the case, since Segrinya, the beneficiary of the election, was never served with documents to challenge his election. Meanwhile, Segrinya, who never appeared in court but rather was at massacre answering charges of being involved in the massacre district massacres, has been remanded to Kitalia together with Makindia West Member of Parliament Alan Sewanyana on three counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. Let's go for a very quick short break. We will be right back. Anger and disappointment in the Gambia after the announcement on Sunday of the unlikely coalition between the part of former leader Yaya Jame and that of his successor Adama Barrow seeking a new mandate in December. According to Hamid Adiomo, editor in chief of the New Day newspaper in Gambia, human rights defenders see this coalition as a betrayal to the victims of Yaya Jame's 20 years of rule. Hamid Adiamo retaliated that people should not forget that this is the party that decided at that time and held the position that Barrow will not be president of Gambia, adding that this was a party that actually brought the country to its knees and it was ready if it had the opportunity to burn the country down. The agreement stipulates that Jamez APRC party will be part of Adama Barrow's next government after the December 4th elections. The party's spokesman also spoke of a possible return of its leader. Hamid Adiamo added that the members of the APRC themselves do not want Jami back in the country because towards the end of Yahya Jami's reign, he was already turning against his friends and his own associates. Critics fear that the alliance between the APRC and the NPP will deny victims their right to justice. Around 18 million Americans are expected to cast their ballots in pivotal legislative and regional elections on September 8th amid strict safety guidelines for campaigning parties as the North African country grapples with the new wave of COVID-19 driven mainly by the Delta variant. The political parties are going to streets in small groups of a maximum of 25 members and have intensified their campaigns on social media following the restrictions imposed due to the pandemic. In addition to changes in the way the parties campaign, the pandemic has also been one of the main concerns of the voters who are hoping the elections can bring changes and help to overcome the economic crisis deepened by COVID-19. COVID-19 has caused many young people in Morocco who can't find a job to migrate as an option to fulfill their dreams and have a better life abroad, even if that means putting their life at risk. Lack of work, clients and financial support, that's what the pandemic has made for Fatima, a 41-year-old widow and mother of four children who runs a beauty salon in Saleh, a city located near the capital. For political analyst Mustafa Yassin, the Moroccans and especially the young people are baiting on these elections in order to open new horizons. 
Today, Wednesday, voters will choose the 395 deputies to form the House of Representatives and 678 seats in regional councils. Moving on, Guinea's opposition leader Selou Diallo has welcomed the coup against the country's president Alpha Conde and said that he was willing to work with the junta, a major endorsement from the political class for coup leader Mamade De Boya. We have more on this report. In a press conference on Monday, opposition leader Selou Diallo said that the National Committee for Rally and Development can count on the support of the National Alliance for Change and Democracy in the effort to build a peaceful democracy in their country. He added that this was an opportunity to pay tribute to all Guineans inside and outside the country whose mobilization contributed to the fall of that dictatorship and to honor the memory of those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the advent of September 5th, 2021, the date of the coup. But the West African faces major political uncertainties regardlessly. The military has not revealed a broader plan for governing the country other than an announcement to replace regional governors with military commanders. Some fear that the coup will mark the return of military rule to Guinea, a country that's no stranger to volatility. Mamadou Doumbouya, a former French army officer, cited poverty and corruption as justification for his coup. Away from that, South Africa's Electoral Commission on Monday pushed forward the planned local election after court ruling that directed the vote to be postponed due to the ongoing health crisis. Initially scheduled for October 27th, the vote will now be held not later than November 1st. This latest change is widely seen as a lifeline for the embattled African National Congress, which still has hundreds of candidates who have not registered yet. ANC has been battling a recent protest from its staff members who demand their delayed salaries. Vying candidates who previously had until August 23rd to declare their interests have been given an extension. South African President Cyrilla Ramaphosa, who heads the party, held the decision on Monday after meeting with party officials and said that this was in line with the constitutional and legal framework. In July, the Electoral Commission had asked the courts to postpone the elections until 2022, fearing that the COVID-19 pandemic would jeopardize the fairness of the vote, especially for minor parties. The ANC supported the request, while its main rival, the Democratic Alliance, strongly opposed it. The Constitutional Court finally rejected the appeal on Friday, ordering the elections to be held between October 27th and November 1st. To know in our business news today, Congolese President Felix Ashisekedi will wrap up his two-day official visit to Turkey on Wednesday. Shisekedi was received at the presidential palace in Ankara by his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Tuesday. Congolese President Felix Kisekedi and Turkey's Tayyip Erdogan's talks focused on bilateral cooperation and relations between Turkey and Africa. According to the Congolese presidency, the two leaders also expressed their common desire to increase trade between the two countries with the objective of reaching a volume of 250 million US dollars in the medium term. Turkey has increased its presence in Africa in recent years. The number of Turkish diplomatic missions on the continent has increased from 12 in 2002 to 43 this year. The country's national carrier Turkish Airlines serves 53 passenger destinations in Africa in 2021, up from 18 in 2011. Turkish interests in Africa include trade, investment, culture, security, military cooperation, among others. Kisekedi and Erdogan also discussed the preparations for the third Turkey Africa summit expected to be held in October this year. In our health and news today, the Ministry of Health has started installing tracking devices in more than 300 ambulances from all referral hospitals. The Ministry procured an international farm from India to take on the exercise. The company, whose names were not revealed, has so far installed the devices in five ambulances before rolling out to other regions. 
while receiving an ambulance from Intergovernmental Authority on Development for Tororo District yesterday, Mr. John Baptist Nambohe, the Commissioner Emergency Medical Services, said the move aims at reducing misuse of government vehicles. He said that they will be able to minimize mismanagement, especially when they are supposed to work on emergency response at a certain referral hospital, adding that the device would also monitor fuel consumption. Ms. Lucy Dax Bacha, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, head of mission to Uganda, said they decided to support government to fight the spread of the COVID pandemic. As of 5th September 2021, Uganda has registered 120,714 cases of COVID-19 with 3,061 deaths and has administered a total of 1,476,526 doses of vaccines. In our sports news today, Uganda National Volleyball Men's Team kicked off the 2021 African Nations Volleyball Championship in style with a commanding 3-1 win over West Africans Burkina Faso in Pool A at the Chigali Arena, Rwanda, on Tuesday, 7th September. Uganda National Volleyball Men's Team won 3 of 4 sets, played 25 over 15, 25 over 18 and 25 13 as the West Africans managed to take over one set of 26 to 28. The East African representatives served off the game brilliantly with a great performance in the opening two sets 25 to 15 and 25 to 18. Burkina Faso rallied back to pull back and recover with victory in the third set of 26 to 28 and force a decider and force a decider that Uganda easily won 25 over 13 to record the opening win at the championships. Uganda head coach Shira Omuriwe Buyungo saluted the charges for the brave performance. Uganda will face East African neighbors Burundi in their next game on Thursday 9th September 2021 before winding up with the hosts Rwanda as the guest to qualify for the quarterfinals intensifies. The top two teams from each group will qualify for the quarterfinals. The African Nations Volleyball Championships doubled as the 2022 World Championship Zone qualifiers. Now, before we end our news bulletin, let's do take a recap of our top stories. DPP launches prosecutor plea bargain guidelines. Critics warn of possible unrest if Jamie's party joins government. And in sports, Uganda edged Burkina Faso in opening duel of the championship. That was the news. Thank you for always keeping it TV Africa. Please do stay tuned. More programming coming your way.